Greetings, fans of TechSyndicate.com. Today, we're going to do a build with the NZXT Phantom 530, two closed-loop water coolers, an, a Kraken, uh, NZXT Kraken X40 and an NZXT Kraken X60, and the NZXT Hale 82 V2 700-watt power supply. Now, what we're going to build is a Haswell um, i7-4770K running stable at 4.8 gigahertz with a water-cooled GPU. Let's get started. So here's an overview of what we're gonna do. We've got a, an AMD graphics card that gets massively hot. We've got the Kraken G10 GPU adapter plate that we're gonna use with the Kraken X40 CPU cooler. And what that lets us do is use a CPU water cooler on a GPU, and that's gonna be our smaller radiator. And we're gonna put that in the back of the case. Then we've got a dual 140 radiator for the CPU. Now this Haswell 4.8, and we have a hard time keeping it cool. Now so far, the only cooling solution that can keep our Haswell 4.8 cool and stable is a unit from Coolants, which is you know a separate radiator reservoir tubing system. And you know even with a case like this, it would be tough to mount a system like that and still have it all be sort of self-contained. But we're gonna try it with the Kraken X60 closed loop water cooler and see what happens. Now, for the motherboard, we're using an ASUS Z87WS. This is a workstation class board. It has all the overclocking features. It's a Z87 chipset. Uh, it's got some of the same components as their ROG line of boards, but this is the board that we can hit 4.9 gigahertz on our i7-4770K on two cores. That's crazy. Now, even with a coolants unit, it's not perfectly stable, so we're only planning to run this at 4.8 if we can get it stable with the water cooling setup. But that's the motherboard we're gonna use. And for the RAM, we're using ADATA High Performance 2.4 GHz RAM. Now one nice thing about this case is that the motherboard standoffs come pre-installed, so getting this mounted is pretty easy. The standoffs are even in the right place for this particular motherboard, so all we have to do is put the motherboard down in there, screw a few screws down, and we're good to go. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and mount the GPU. Now check out our other video where we've taken the slot cooler off of this AMD graphics card and replaced it with the Kraken X40 based cooling solution. So what that means is we've got a closed loop water cooler radiator on our graphics card to cool it now. In order to do that, we had to use the Kraken G10 graphics card adapter and the Kraken X40 um, water cooler. Now with the graphics card in place, we're gonna screw the radiator to the back of the case. What we're going for is a configuration that allows the heat to escape out the back and the top. Now, if you're paying attention, you're, you should see that you could actually run a second 140 millimeter radiator in the front. In fact, a lot of the pictures online and, and maybe the recommended configuration is that you actually mount the GPU's radiator in the front. Well, in anticipation of someday maybe having a second GPU in this thing, we figure that's the easier configuration to get to. Uh, because we're going to have a whole bunch more stuff in the way on the CPU here in a minute with water cooling on the CPU. So we went ahead and mounted it in the back. In this configuration, it means that you're always bringing in cooler air from the bottom and the front, and the warmer air is always going out the back. When you mount the radiator in the front, it's going to be bringing in cool air from the front, but the air, by the time it makes it into the case, will have been warmed by that radiator. And that's probably okay if you're running a second GPU, but for right now, we've just got the one GPU, and this is the configuration that we're going to run with. The next thing we want to do is sort of do a pre-fit clearance check around the CPU and the top of the case. Now our plan is to mount the Kraken X60, a dual 140 closed loop water cooler, on the CPU and have it routed to the top of the case. The radiator is actually going to be mounted on the outside of the case though. Someday we might want to set up a push-pull configuration, especially if we're right on the edge because we're planning an extreme overclock in this Haswell and we may need to use a push-pull fan configuration on the CPU cooler. So in this way we can actually mount one set of fans and the cooler outside of the case. So let's give that a try and do a test fit. The next thing we need to do is release the Kraken X60 in this case. And that joke's getting old, so I'll stop it. All right, so we're just gonna use one fan for the test fit and make sure that everything has clearance. So we're just gonna unsnap the front, and then with the front unsnapped, we can actually take the radiator and one fan and just sort of loosely put it together and make sure that we're gonna have plenty of clearance. Oh yeah, it definitely looks like this is gonna work. And we're gonna have to orient our radiator so the tubes are at the front. Now that's probably gonna block one of our five and a quarter inch bays, but we can live with that. 
All right, since our test fit went really well, we're going to uh, mount it on the top for real this time, making sure that our fan orientation is right and that we can easily manage the uh, cable routing. So as you can see, the dual 140 radiator is actually mounted to the top of the case, and then I've got the two fans mounted on top of that. And this is gonna have enough clearance with the plastic top of the NZXT Phantom 530 that we're not gonna run into any problems. This is actually gonna work out really well because this gives us a ton of room inside the case. The next thing we need to do is mount the um, bracket that the Kraken X60 is going to use to, to mount to the CPU. So fortunately the, the NZXT Phantom 530 case has a huge cutout on the back and it's going to make this really easy. Alright, with both of those radiators mounted, I mean check out how much room there is inside the case even with two closed loop water coolers. Heck, we could fit a third if we wanted to, maybe even a fourth. Um, the last ingredient though is a power supply. So for this we're going to use the Hale 82 700 watt for also from NZXT. This is an 80 plus bronze certified uh, power supply that means it's got you know power efficiency levels up to about 85 percent. It's a completely modular design so that means you can only use the cables that you need to use and every cable is flat except the motherboard uh, cable. That means that you can route the cables a lot easier. Now the Phantom 530 that we're using has over an inch of clearance at the back but um, you know, the cable routing is uh, a lot easier. It's all just flat black cables, which is really nice. This thing also has a single 12 volt rail. It's SLI and Crossfire ready, and it has a 135 millimeter silent fan uh, that's really quiet uh, for, for keeping the power supply cool. All right, now that we've got it put together, let's power it on and see what happens. Now to save time, I've gone ahead and configured this thing for 4.8 gigahertz. I'm just gonna do a quick A to 64 benchmark and see if it's stable. Looks pretty promising. We've been able to run 80 to 64 for a couple of minutes and it seems pretty stable. So I think this thing would be stable enough for gaming and, and that sort of thing. And the temperatures are staying nice and cool, 80, 81. It'd be nice if it were a little cooler and I could get it cooler by ramping up the speed of the fan. We were able to run 80 to 64 for a couple of minutes at 4.8 gigahertz and the CPU temperature peaked at about 82 degrees. It's really not that loud. That's very impressive. And if you put your hand over the fan, you could really feel the heat coming off of it. One last thing that we can take a look at is the software that these closed loop water coolers come with. Now both the X40 and the X60 come with a connector that can plug into a USB header on your motherboard. And they come with software that let you give finer grain control to how you want the closed loop water cooler to respond to temperature events, things like that. You can also change the color of the LED. So check it out. So here's the control software. It gives you some tabs across the bottom, but it's a full RGB LED. So you can configure whatever color you want. You can also configure it to go to a high temperature color uh, whenever it crosses a certain threshold. Now the fade to uh, checkbox, I'm not really sure what it does. NZXT said they were still working on the software and there was gonna be an update. Um, for the software in the future, but um, I couldn't actually get it to fade. When it would cross the threshold, it would immediately jump to that color. But still, if you want to be sort of visually notified when your GPU or your CPU crosses a certain temperature, uh, you can use this software for that, and the color of the LED will change color when the temperature is above a certain thing. Strobe also works, so if you want to go back and forth between a couple of different colors, you can do that with the software, which is pretty neat. You can also use the uh, fan setting to control a ramp up, ramp down, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, for temperature response for the fans, which is pretty neat. That's it for the Phantom 530 build. Now we're gonna use this rig for a couple of other things coming up. So be sure to check out our other videos on uh, how to modify your graphics card with the Kraken G10 and the Kraken X40 uh, water cooler, which is what we used in this build, and how to install the Kraken X60 and uh, the features overview of the Phantom 530. So be sure to check those out. Uh, links in the description. Until next time.